if a man cries in front of me, say like he's having a horrible day and we go on a date, and he cries and starts complaining about all the horrible things that happened in his, in his day and this and that, that's gonna turn me off. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. Sublime. I think bottom line, men understand that we need to gain a working understanding of female psychology in order to gain at least sexual access to you. In order to gain a, a ear, your ear, to even like talk you up and even get to that point. Women, on the other hand, do not believe they need to understand male nature. Mm -hmm. Women, for the most part, think men are simpletons. Women, for the most part, think that men are only led by their penises. And, and I think that's why women play the attention game. Mm -hmm. And the reality is the feat for men is to get attention. The feat for women is not to get attention. That, that comes easy. Your feat is retention. But in order to know how to retain a man, you need to have a working understanding of who men are. You need to have a working understanding of what to look for. You need to be inquisitive. You need to be able to ask honest and fair questions instead of what I think happens is, especially black women, number one, there's kind of a baked in uh, trivialization of men's value. Okay. I think number two, Women <laughs> these days especially kind of feel superior, intellectually superior to men. Um, so it's like he doesn't know what he wants, so I'll prove it to him. Um, and then lastly, I think um, women believe that men are lost without them. Like men, men... Uh, not only does he not know, really know what he wants, but um, he definitely needs me. He, de he, de he definitely needs me. So I'm not even going to consider where he is in life. You know what I'm saying? You'll see some women trying to force 23-year-old dudes in a full, long-term, committed relationship. I'm like... I definitely do think there is an overestimation from, from a woman's side of um, how much... And not sex in the literal sex, but just how much sex or female attention men really get. Um, and I don't remember where I saw this. Maybe it was on YouTube and the guy, I wish I could, I'm so bad with names, but he was just pretty much saying how men under the age of 30, a lot of them are not, haven't had sex in months. Like, it's just not a thing. Like we, and I feel like sometimes women, especially when they see an attractive man, they're like, oh, he gets all the hoes. Or he gets all the pussy. And it's like, a, like you said, it is a trivialization of um, the, the, the presentation or the, the, the nurturing spirit or the kind spirit that I'm predisposed or I should be predisposed to give to this human being. Because yes, he's a man, but he's a human. And that's another conversation that we do need to have about the way that we are treating each other as... Yes, this person is a man or this or that, but you know, he has emotions, he has feelings, he is intellectual, he is all these things. So that's my first point. And secondly, and you mentioned catch 22s all the time. I think that there's a dissonance between what we have been taught, what it has been, um, you know, uh, I guess what we have been taught and what we actually experience. Because you're saying, on one hand, yes, men are, we think that men are simpletons, but on the other hand, a lot of our fathers or a lot of the uncles or whatever is like, I just want a woman that don't talk all the time, make me a sandwich, give me some pussy. Is that not a simple, pretty simple notion? So it's like, there's a, that's a, it's a little bit of a, of a dissonance or a disconnect. Um, and I think that it's, obviously every individual is different. Some people are very shallow and some people are deep as the ocean and that's just what it is. But, um, let me clarify that. Yes. Cause that, that comes up a lot. Um, 
Men are simple in the sense that we don't need much. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not simple in the sense that, you know, our motivations are different mm-hmm. than women. Rather than all, everything I'm saying is relative to women. Our um, curriculum, as it were, is different relative to women. Our timelines are different relative to women. Um, but again, we don't need as much. Like we, we don't revel in complication, right? Um, and from a female point of view, that can be complicated <laughs> to, to digest. Like you don't, you know what I'm saying? Your hormones aren't all over the place. Uh, with that being said, I think it would help women to take some time to get to know men. And what I mean, get to know men, I'm not talking about like you're on a date and ask questions, stuff mm-hmm. like that. That is a part of it. But like... You want us to do our research. Familiarize yourself with, with, with um, you know, male pathology. Yeah. Right? I always recommend Dr. Tia San Johnson, for instance. Mm-hmm. Because the reality is like men haven't been socialized the same way women have been to even have the vocabulary to talk about some of our anxieties, some of our, you know, the things that go on upstairs. Men aren't necessarily, um, again, socialized to be as articulate Mm -hmm. or or to be as expressive as women. Mm -hmm. And that is also, even that piece should also be something that women consider. So like, whether you, um, whether you're reading like Warren Farrell books, like The Boy Crisis or The Myth of Male Power Mm -hmm. um, or, or, you know, other other books that kind of help conceptualize what it is that happens with women because it's very easy for that superiority complex to happen with women so for instance you know female babies tend to develop more vast and uh, sophisticated vocabularies than their male counterparts women tend to hit ma- uh, 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 mental maturity a lot sooner than their male counterparts right because women tend to hit puberty that prefrontal cortex develops quicker in girls than it does in boys, mm-hmm. right? And there are reasons for that, right? There, there are biological reasons for that. That's something that women should also be familiarizing themselves with. Mm-hmm. Now, again, um, men are simple in the sense that we don't want much, but they're still a lot more beneath the surface. It's just like the iceberg, sure. right? And you need to be curious enough to actually get a full and nuanced understanding of what it does mean to be a man because it can look simple on the face yeah but it's a lot more going on yeah and i'm i'm happy i'm encouraged by the fact that now you're seeing somebody like dr johnson and um you know um you know he's he's creating like a black masculinist studies Mm -hmm. um department you know that's that's actually starting to actually hash all these things out and starting to show that Black boys, for instance, are molested at rates similar to black girls. Yeah. We need to talk about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, prostate cancer happens at the same rate, damn near, as breast cancer. Yeah. Nobody talks about that. That's right? true. Right? Domestic violence. Men experience that at similar rates as women. Nobody talks about that. Yeah. You know, so so I think um there's a there's a empathy disparity Mm -hmm. and if you claim to actually like value men and love men and want men you also need to do your due diligence because we're forced to yeah i don't disagree with that um i would love to see us navigate away from the western mindset of i take care of myself And that's just what it is, because a lot of what you just mentioned has a lot to do with or um, are qualities of people that take care of each other within community. And um, obviously, the black community is we're in a rough patch right now. Um, And if we were to get back into that community mindset, I think that we would be more empathetic and sympathetic and more What's the word? We would be more observant of the health and wellness of everyone, not just the children and not just the women. Um, And I wish that the manosphere, 
Not saying that they don't, but I wish that the manosphere would have a narrative more similar to what you just said. Um, and obviously it's going to be challenging with black women in black men in these conversations. Cause another thing that I've seen with, with men that I've dated, um, they're, they tend to be very closed off. So I think that it's going to be difficult to say black woman, be empathetic and, and be open to chipping away that the tip of the iceberg and going deep with someone that's not willing to go deep so let's because talk of about traumas, it. because of whatever. Well, let's talk about it. Why do you think men on average are so closed off? What think, makes sense to you? Yeah. You said, does it make sense? Like what, what, what makes, makes sense? sense? Yeah. I think there's two things. I always like to go back. I think that it didn't serve men in the past historically to talk about their feelings because they were busy protecting their communities. We're not, what am I sitting here and talking about the fact that I, you know, was just in whatever battle that I was in or whatever could happen. Or the fact that, you know, um, there was an issue with hunting or whatever, I'm making stuff up, but you kind of get the premise of what I'm saying. What is the, what is the, 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 the point of coming home and talking to my woman or my children or whoever about things that are not going to be, that are not going to directly help me protect my community. Um, and then to kind of transition into that in modern times, there's really no need from an individual household perspective for a man to be on such high alert. Some men or some people might say men need to be ready either way. Men need to know how to fight. Men need to, need to know how to use guns, protect themselves against the government, all those things, of course. But there's not as much of a need. We don't have as many threats in life, especially in America. You don't have, just don't have as many threats. Um, so we can make space for men to now talk about their feelings but on the flip side, do women get turned on by men talking about their feelings? And yes, I, even me myself, who I like to say that I am a pretty empathetic person and no matter who you are, I want to sit down and I would love to hear your story. That's not a problem. But even me myself, if a man cries in front of me, say like he's having a horrible day and we go on a date, when he cries and starts complaining about all the horrible things that happened in his in his day and this and that, that's going to turn me off. I can say I'm the most empathetic person in the world. <laughs> that's going to turn. That's going to turn me off. So it's like catch twenty two. That is the phrase of this segment. It is catch twenty two. But I okay, mean, let's, hey. let's, let's talk about it. Okay. Let's talk about it. Because I, I think, I think you know, I try to not limit this type of conversation to just romantic, like, dealings and relationships. I think it's, it's bigger than that. Um, and to your point, being an emotional exhibitionist mm -hmm. has never served maleness, mm -hmm. has never served masculinity, um, whether it was because men had to run full speed into a battle or whether they needed to march down into um, coal mines, mm -hmm. right? Um, there was no utility, right? And I think, you know, we need to be fair that men's value has been intrinsically tied to their perceived utility. Mm -hmm. And that utility is intrinsically inherently tied to how disposable he is or how disposable he is willing to be. Mm -hmm. The men that are celebrated throughout history are the men who were ready to die. Mm -hmm. Whether it meant dying internally for a bigger purpose or, you know what I'm saying, to protect, uh, to provide for your family or literally jumping in front of a bullet to protect your woman. Mm -hmm. Right. Like there's a reason past. Oh, it just looks cool. There's a reason most women want their man to be taller than them. It goes back to the psychological programming that a bigger man can better 
defend me with his life. So this new shit that women are talking about, oh, I want him to be more expressive and shit like that, to your point and to your admission, it lies in direct opposition to the utility that females are still biologically predisposed to reward us for. Mm. And the reality is women do not know how to process male emotions. Mm. Women do not know how to process male emotions. What tends to happen is, number one, at a later date, a woman can weaponize it against you. Mm -hmm. um, a woman can make it about herself. Oh, baby, I feel unfulfilled right now. I'm not a good enough woman for you. And now not only do you have to deal with feeling unfulfilled, you also have to now deal with hurting her feelings. Mm -hmm. So most men are going to say, nah, I want to keep my life as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. Right? So again, if we took the time to actually consider life, consider the worldview of men, we wouldn't be so flippantly saying things like men need to be more open, men need to be this, men need to be that, because we never consider the cost. Well, let me ask you then, and I want you to explain this a little bit better, um, or just not better, but in more detail. When you were saying that um, men are, or you were saying something how like women feel like men are not as intellectual, they feel like they're superior, there's more to men, this and that. Obviously, we know that men emote differently than women do. Um, it's not going to look like, hey, sit down, let's talk about our feelings like I do with my woman. What does that look like then for women? Like, how do y'all want for us to handle you all and get and chip below the surface? Are there certain questions that we can ask? Um, you see, you get see where I'm kind of trying to go? The best thing a woman can do is not add any extra complication to a man's life. That's the best advice I can give. As opposed to um, demanding, because what used to be provided by an entire village, now we're expecting one person to provide it for us. Mm -hmm. I want this motherfucker to be my provider, protector, best friend, uh, All the things. movie partner, best sex I've had, this, 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 this. And it's like, God damn. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is like... <laughs> Men say this all the time, and women kind of gloss over this. Be his peace, be his peace, be his peace, be his, be his freaking peace. Give that man space to actually think about how to better protect and provide. Because here's here's the thing, right? Let me let me try to paint this picture for you. Have you ever seen like a bodyguard on duty, like whether it's a like Beyonce's bodyguard or whatever the case may be? Does that nigga look happy? No. Why? Because he has a job. What's his well, he's job? He's supposed to be like smiling. What? No, but what is his job? To protect Beyonce, if that's the. I, 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 would, I would stretch it and say his job is pessimism. Okay. If you're going to protect anything worth a damn, you have to expect the worst possible things that could potentially happen mm -hmm. at every turn. If I'm taking Beyonce that way, I have to consider the fact that there's a dude right there with a knife, there's a sniper on that roof, there's somebody who's gonna rush from here. So my job as a protector mm -hmm. is to be pessimistic to a, to a degree, mm -hmm. right? Is to be cynical to a degree. I'm constantly anticipating problems. Because if I'm going to protect worth a damn, I have to be considering worst case scenario. If I'm going to provide worth a damn, I have to also be considering worst case scenario, whether it's a market crash, whether it's the, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, I lose my job, mm -hmm. whether it's our kids are now sick, our cars are now in the shop. I have to constantly be thinking of worst case scenario and how to anticipate and how to prepare for that. So when men are saying be his peace, don't add any extra shit, any yeah. extra nonsense yeah. to what I have to baseline already be concerning myself about. Yeah. Do I look fat in that dress? You probably do, but I got more important shit I got to think about. And again, yeah. I'm talking about good men. I'm talking about men who are actually providers and protectors. Mm -hmm. Take shit off his plate. That's it. Stop, stop projecting your female expectations on him. Get you some girlfriends where you guys could, you know, that catharsis that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You guys could 
talk for hours about bullshit or the TV show, whatever the case may be. That man is planning. That man is anticipating. Don't talk to me right now. There might be a sniper on that roof. Don't talk to me right now. There might be a, I might have to jump in front of a bullet right now. Have I updated the life insurance policy? So y'all will be taken care of when I'm gone? This is the stuff men are thinking about. We're anticipating the absolute worst. Mm -hmm. So again, because women don't understand how our brains work, of course he should be also thinking about this and this and this and this and that. I don't, I don't feel fulfilled. This and, that. and then the guy is left fucking scrambled. Yeah. So part of the grace is consider what his job is and what that means um, for him and what that means, like what's happening in his mind. Yeah. And think about how you can accommodate that. Again, if it's a good man. But think about how you can accommodate that and not overcomplicate it. Yeah. But that's that's the men are simple piece that I'm talking about. Okay. Like we're very, I'm a quarterback, I'm throwing the ball. Or I'm handing it off to the running back. That's my job. I'm not thinking about I'm thinking about what the defense is doing, obviously. I'm thinking about where everybody's gonna be at at the field, but I'm a quarterback. Mm -hmm. And similarly, as a man, I'm a protector, I'm a provider. Let me do that. I need space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those are the women that get celebrated. Mm -hmm. Those are the women like, it, it don't matter, you know, this, this and that. I'm not leaving my wife. Mm -hmm. That's that's my, listen, she's my peace. When men are saying, like men try to articulate these things, but it gets glossed though. She's my peace. She's my landing spot. She's my soft spot. I have to go out outside and be a warrior. Because cause think about it. Nurturing is an internal facing endeavor. Nurturing is, I, I'm worrying about everything under this roof. Okay. Protection and provision is an external facing endeavor. Mm -hmm. I'm worrying about everything outside this roof mm -hmm. and how it could potentially affect the things inside this roof. Right. So what tends to happen sometimes is that either that flips or sometimes the woman is also neglecting her role of focusing on everything under the roof. And focus on everything outside. So my girlfriends are saying this, da, 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 that she neglects what she's actually supposed to be doing, what she's actually supposed to be good at. And it also distracts what he's actually supposed to do. We're supposed to be back to back Bonnie and Clyde on some shit. I make sure that these muggers, even if they come close to our house, they're going to get they're not going to make it. <laughs> and you're worrying that kids are taken care of. They're reading at a grade level. You know what I'm saying? This, this and that. And we are we're Voltron. You know, we're, we're working towards a common goal mm -hmm. as opposed to stepping over each other and being each other's headache and give it maybe he just came home from a long day of work. But you didn't buy me flowers, though. You mm -hmm. missed our anniversary. Like. Mm. Yes. This is my allowing it to download face. Take your time. At what point then did women start wanting more from men outside of what they're, they were innately designed to do? And number two, that there, there are certain characteristics of masculinity and femininity that makes it easier to do your duties as a man or a woman, right? Is it, at what point did women start wanting flowers and did we want start wanting all the romantic shit? Is that a modern idea? Um, were our great grandparents okay with everyone does their roles and that's it. There's really, cause, cause the way that, um, when I, when the way that I view sometimes when I view masculinity and everything that you just said, I appreciate about men and I pray that my partner has those characteristics. So let's just put that out there. 